But for all the people for this administration, I pray for all the people that work in the government of Liberia, I lift them up to you. But I pray that as the president and pastor of love for this country, Liberia, I pray for all those that work for him and work for the government, and they have a love for Liberia and the people of Liberia. I pray for all that's in prayer. I thank you for everyone that is present here today. We lift this program up to you and we give you the glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. We're going to have a special selection by the epidemic mask. <laughs> Welcome to the Executive Mansion Live. This is the community engagement. Hallelujah. The song says, God is right here. Amen. Grace, New Grace, Arlington Church. This is the Liberian Community Town Hall happening. Here with His Excellency President Joseph Mumbwa.
all of the knowledge of the course of the UL, but also grant the community the opportunity of interacting with you, the members of the Middle March, on ways in which we can improve the relationship between the UL, the Tasmania, especially those of us in Texas, the government of Nigeria and Java both of you to improve the development of Nigeria. <laughs> we also want to thank the representatives of several electronic community associations that are here. We know that people came from far here, whether it's Oklahoma, Houston, Austin, or other places. We want to say thank you for coming and acknowledge you. We will look forward to the whole collaboration in the year ahead. Finally, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to come and present to you His Excellency Jeff Swana, Ambassador, the one that is the first Ambassador, extraordinary and contemporary to the United States of America, with corresponding responsibility for Canada and Mexico. <coughs> Now you have uh, the ambassador of Liberia, assigned to the United States, is about to address the welcome to Mr. President, members and officials of the President of the Party, Mr. Nathaniel Gomi, President and members of the Dalian Community Association of Dallas Pop Worlds, Clergy, Friends of Liberia, Liberians, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, let me mention the officials of Yola. I'm of Yola here present. I have a singular honor, a real great honor for me, to try to introduce someone that needs no introduction to all of you here. Everyone knows about JNB. But what is the there is that most of you have not seen him before. Now we are privileged tonight to see him. <laughs> With that said, it gives me great pleasure to introduce my president, your president, <laughs> and the president of the Republic of the Good evening and thanks to all of you for the warm welcome. And I kind of ask you to have your seats. I was back from the beginning. Let me recognize the presence of the pastor of this great church and the chairman of your community and the members, the members of our delegation, and to all of you, our good people. Ambassadors for Liberia in this community. We want to thank you very much. We are very happy to be here this evening. Uh, and we are here because of you. I will remember in 2016 I was here. Uh, 
And in fact, during my visit here, I was made honorary citizen. And we had the occasion also to visit the hospital where one of our brothers died during the Ebola. During our visit, we also met some Liberian who had done well and we visited with them. We also remember all of what you've done in the past and you're still doing for your people back home. The people back home are quite aware of uh, your contribution, not only during the Ebola, but the remittances that you sent to help to bring comfort to them, for which we are very grateful. But let me say a big thank you to the United States of America. <laughs> a country that has used greatness to accommodate people from all walks of life, giving them opportunity to lay here, get educated, make a living, help their people back home, and protect them. There's not many countries around the world that do that. So we have to be grateful that this great country that is care for humanity. As you know, we are here uh, in Dallas for um, a summit of heads of state from Africa to discuss economic issues, including the Millennium Challenge that has contributed enormously to the development of countries, up to about 47 countries that have participated. We have benefited from that. And we are here to learn from it, to be able to do the things that we are supposed to do, to qualify for another compact. This compact uh, is so interesting, it's, it's a learning curve because all they talk about is good governance. How do you take care of your people, take care of the resources of your country, provide your people the needed protection, be able to make sure that the young people of the country are educated, that the health care delivery programs are working. And so we are here. The conference ended today, which will be beginning tomorrow. But we have been most grateful and we have come to say thank you for all you have done. And most importantly, for being good citizens out of Liberia living in here. Uh, we, we know that you are all aware what our country has gone through. And I want to thank you for the support you gave during the election. You may have not been there. But some of your resources filled in the election. Yeah. 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 Some of your prayers for a better country. And also, some of you may cause that may have made a difference. I always remind Liberian that for me it was not a campaign for presidents. It was a campaign for leadership of our country. Yeah. 
as I said yesterday during a forum that's in Nigeria, that I'm, I'm not a regular politician because a politician looks forward to the next election. I'm here to look for the next generation. <laughs> because God gave us opportunities that we use all opportunities for the next generation to make sure that we leave conditions better than we left them. And that's, that's our commitment. That's our commitment. We came under the slogan of arrest. A R R E S T. Talking about agriculture, talking about roads, yes. talking about the rule of law, education, sanitation, and tourism. These cross cut many, many development areas. And we are committed to this. We are committed to putting the image back on our country so that when you go home this time, you, you know that you're coming home, you'll be received as a Liberia. From the airport, you will know that you are coming back home. Something that I've been lacking over the years. We'll make sure that People are not going to search your bag or take up your things that you carry. That people are not going to harass you. And we intend to push forward so that in a couple of years, for those of you who say, I'm going home, you can actually go home, drive home, and go home. So most people say they go home, but when they get to Monrovia, the roads are bad, distant. Those are the conditions we intend to improve. We intend to make sure that the resources of our country will yield dividends for the people. We want to make sure that, that what has kept us behind corruption, thievery, that we put up to them to develop our country. I tell countries, big or small, that all countries' leadership is for the same purpose to provide life for their people to provide good living, good opportunities. And I can assure you, this is what we're going to do. And this is what we committed ourselves to. So, so I want to thank you all. I know many times you've been disappointed. But this is time for the hearings. And that's why we came to rescue this country, Liberia. To rescue, not to rescue and do the same things that kept it down, but to rescue and make sure we build a country that citizens will be proud of, that people will travel only because they want to go somewhere else not because they lack opportunities, and we are committed to that. So I want to thank you all for being good citizens again, for being here together, holding together, working in the interest of your people back home and your country. We are very happy to be here this evening. Uh, thank the beautiful choir. I wish we were here on a Sunday. 
we just want to say to all of you, God's blessing and continue commitment to your country uh, because that's the country you have and that's the country that you represent when you are here. And we thank you that you're playing your role. I want to assure you that we'll play our role to preserve it for you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Nancy. Understand? We're going to have an acknowledgement and presentation, presentation of Soviet Airs by Mr. Neil J. Hammond, who is the chairman of the World Migrant Company Association. So, the program continues here at the New Grace Hamilton. Good evening, everybody. We are grateful that we all are here for the first day. And he, in the midst of His Excellency, Mr. Yuma Baka, President of the Republic of Liberia. Mr. President, we appreciate the fact that you took time to be here for us today. And members of the cabinet, ministers, and all the uh, government staff that are here. Uh, to all the LCA members and organizations that I give to say thanks as well. But Mr. President, we know who just wants you to come and leave before a little token is must. So if you would, we have a plaque uh, from our organization, the Liberian Community Association of Dallas Fruit Workers, Texas. Uh, Mr. So President, we present would like to present this slide to you to his in the position of your visit to us. And we are presenting the plaque to His Excellency. Also, we don't just want to give you the plaque, but you know, we have a pre order this, Mr. President, for you. Here, in here, in the area, we do celebrate July 26th. And this is awesome. our t-shirt for this year. We understand the First Lady is not here with you, but we ordered two. One for you and one for her. It's so we to open this to you. Small. Okay. In okay. Uh, preparation for the July uh, That will soon be yes, and one for the First Lady. Even though she's not here, but the first man, we recognize our efforts as a first lady. And I will read to you what the flag says. And the flag was given to his excellency as with gratitude presented to his excellency Joseph. Wakai Senior, President of the Republic of Liberia, in honor of your exemplary service and well, dedication to our beloved country, Liberia. From the Executive Mansion, the Liberian Community us that Association, His Excellency was coming to ask why he was here, you would like to have a package that's in the to Dallas for the region for the forward. So on May 9, so this time, 20, uh, if you have questions, so we are moving to the next uh, of interaction. Uh, 
And yeah, they have made the presentation okay. before. Please yeah. do not start the protocol. We've already scanned on the protocol. So definitely you can ask uh, the question directly. It should not take more than. Yeah. It's the oh, in the mic. Okay. Uh, in most African traditions, when you give people gifts, you turn around and give and give. When it takes a reminder of snap, that he knows the tradition. So, I'm going to do excuse me for not following the tradition. Uh, His Excellency is going to make his presentation. Oh, this is something that is unprecedented. Uh, President uh, Umar Bwakai was just honored and... Mr. President, President we, we are so pleased to be here. He's also and appreciating the community. We are happy that we know your leadership you've been providing to the community. We brought this for you. From Liberia, made in Liberia. This is unprecedented, actually. You and, I it. and also for the pastor. Excuse me. Dallas, Texas. A a spiritual leader of this community. That is you. Of the Latin community. Is the In the meantime, let me introduce uh, these you know, members of my delegation. Uh, you know the ambassador already, our ambassador, the Minister of Commerce, Ami Muda, Dr. Kone is a senior advisor. Sir Johnny is the economic advisor. Then, of course, you have Winifred to shield at protocol. And Kula is the press secretary. You have the other there, Marie Lima, Louis Tamba, and all of them are doing them. And our uh, protocol is right here. Telling the special aid. Of course, uh, your old familiar Yula man uh, is here with me. So we just want to thank you for the gift. And also, we are very happy to be here. God bless you. Thank you. So it's time for the interactive section. You raise your hand also to go recognize you. Get the microphone to you. Yeah. It's an interactive presentation. Okay. Yeah. So we don't need a mic. Welcome to the Executive Mansion. In Dallas, Texas, the President is engaging with uh, members of the Liberian Mr. President, it's an honor to have you here. Um, my question will be more like a suggestion because I want to be part of the solution. Over the last 20 years, 25 years, I've made several trips to the church, made several trips to like you know, mission trips, medical mission, my wife, who will be a doctor this Saturday, she's getting a degree. <laughs> we make a lot of mission trips to like you know, have churches in like you know, New Grace, uh, New Grace churches in like you know, we have a school in Boys Town, and we have a clinic in uh, Barnett on Barnett's Hill Road. Getting to Liberia is very expensive. It's one major airline that flies to Liberia in the States, Brussels. And sometimes Brussels kicks the prices up. My suggestion, and I want to see if 
the airport that Grace of Blue Airport, planes, United Airlines, I did my research, United Airlines, Air France, PLM, and Delta, the one that come back to my bird fly. Is there anything you can do to facilitate them to get me up? Brussels has corn in the market. Brussels has the prices. <laughs> Excuse I don't me. know if you made a deal. I know Air Morocco was like Europe, but if I take United, they flash right up like Europe, I'm getting my crop. Delta fly right over like New York. If there's anything you all can do, and I would like to help, anything I can do to make your airlines come back to like Europe with a big boost because we talk about tourism, we'll bring jobs for people of Liberia. Yes. It will bring you know, a lot of people we'll going away. One person, part of the market monopoly, Brussels. Uh, I think it's something you can do to bring more people to Liberia. Now the community engagement continues. The uh, question that is, so that is taking the motivator, taking a question. So, concerning the question I had, as a librarian, I was displaced out of war. I didn't get to experience uh, my grandfather um, or grandmother or aunts and uncles. And I experienced a lot of trauma being a refugee coming to America. And my goal and mission was to become a licensed clinical social worker. We can believe that black people or Africans don't pay enough attention to trauma and mental health. And my wish and hope for your presidency and administration is that you will do something to help increase emotional intelligence and maturity amongst the black uh, African people. So I wanted to ask, do you have anything in, in your plan and your administration that's going to speak and target to the trauma that so many Liberians have experienced? Because this is the only country to date that no one has been held accountable for anything that has happened uh, in that generational war and where the people are serving political power amongst the victims that they have deeply and for us to be able to move forward, we have to bring people to task and really pay attention to what has happened in our history so that we truly do not repeat it in our future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, I want to recognize you before you start to speak. Okay, we took two from that way, so we're going to take two from this way. As a gentleman in the back with a white t shirt, he already has a mic. After him, we're going to come to the lady in the back of the belly. Mr. President, it's an honor to stand before you. Go ahead, go ahead. Question for two. So, um, Minister Pastor Havella Brown. And I'm one of the Liberia famous gospel musical artists. I don't have a brand. I won a lot of awards in Liberia. And during my time in Liberia, I've seen gospel artists, secular artists struggle to make it to the top. I've seen radio station charging gospel artists, secular artists just to play their music. But they don't charge to play uh, music from other uh, countries. They play for free. But they charge us to do to play our music. And at the end of the day, we don't earn nothing from our music. And at the end of the day, most of us we leave the country looking for greener pasture faster. And in my America said is here. Everybody that made their way with gospel music in Liberia all went to the United States. We come here, all we do, we work 10 hours, 12 hours, and we look out there, we see all musicians from other countries. They, 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 are, they are moving forward. So we are here because we've done better life. So I want to know, Mr. President, I'm speaking on behalf of all of my colleagues back in Africa. 
What can your government do to help us as battle musician, secular musician, the entertainment in Liberia? What can this government do to help us? Thank you, sir. So the question around support of artists, the entertainment industry. Um, and how the yeah, government yeah, 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 I mean, that's it. I'm here to take a minute. Gospel. Speaking to you is Jimmy and Alpha members of the DC community in America. We are not going to ask a question, not to the president, but to everyone sitting here. Do you know the name of the woman? The woman is the fifth song of this woman. And if you want to find where the woman came from, look in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 7, verse 47. You will find the song of Sia. So the way that you can do it is to call the woman Sia. Now, you know, please go to me as a girl in the world of God. God will be here from the beginning, from the beginning. We can do it in Maya, same as the story. You will know the meaning of the son of Sia. In our time, the first character is Sia. Second is Puma. All the way down. And he is the son of Sia. And he's made my son for the son. And he's the one. 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 Is a common uh, vice president. Okay. Uh, to the event. Thank you for being here and meeting with us, uh, President, uh, His Excellency, uh, President Wada. Mr. President, Americans, Liberians, are really frustrated. Most of us. I am a prime example of one of those ideas. First of all, my name is Frances McCall. I'm the CEO of Frances Academy. I have led the way for so long and heard the call to go back and develop my country. But I have faced numerous challenges and obstacles while trying to contribute to the development of my theory. I entered into a contract with Millennium Corporation in collaboration with the National Housing Authority. After paying the fee in full, the project is now three years to live with no end in sight. I have spent more than $10,000 going back and forth to seek help. As an example, or another example, I bought land to build a school where teachers will go from the U.S. and train teachers in Liberia. After two months, the seller sold and half of the lot to another person. We can build a structure. I was attacked on the land by many of the people who sold the land. We went to court. I was so happy that we went to court, but I was told that I had to bribe to seek justice. <laughs> Why should you care about my story, Mr. President? Because there are hundreds more Liberians like me who have experienced the same words or words. What kind of legacy, Mr. President, you are building for the next generation? How can you protect the financial and legal interests of people passionate to invest in Liberia? In light of these challenges, I'm suggesting, Mr. President, to create an office specifically aimed at assisting Liberians who are leaving from here to contribute and develop their country. Thank you. There are issues within the Liberian community that Liberians are well, and the president and the president will take will respond to the questions that have been asked. Oh. The first five questions. It's working. It's, it's working. 
It's not. It's on. Um, we leave tomorrow to go to um, Atlanta, Georgia. And part of the reason we're going there is to talk about Delta, coming back to Liberia. <laughs> We talk about building sister airport relationship with Arthur Jackson. To also talk about the Boca T. Washington Institute. <laughs> and I want to appeal to you. We have to be grateful to SN Brussels because if we are not for SN Brussels, Beside the local airlines uh, in the local communities will be cut off. They've done a great job. They've done a great job even against all of the odds. I think there were times you heard when planes coming to the airport, there was no electricity. Uh, but I can assure you, when we say rescue, that's what we are talking about. Yes. You got it. The same way you feel angry about these things, we do it in one thing. And that's what we're here to correct. We want to show you it will be corrected. Yes. Talking about trauma counseling, when the war ended, we had a disarmament. We were expecting that there will be trauma counseling. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, not only those who took part in the war, are traumatized. People who have lost family members. And probably you hear that uh, we came because of that. On the 2nd of May, I signed the executive order to make sure that war and economic crimes will be investigated. <laughs> we, have to, we have to put a nine man behind us. Gospel singer, all of what you talk about it's just a symptom of the problem we had in the country. And our purpose is to make sure that we correct those ills. And I have said that during our administration, we want to make sure that every county seat we have a television station. <laughs> Because we're not, we're not a new country. You'll be celebrating 177 years. What do you have to show? Everybody wishing go to Cote d'Ivoire to go. We want people to want to go home. We led people in signing their constitutions. People came to Liberia to seek their freedom. What do we have to show? Nothing. So the rescue team was here to make sure that some of these things will be corrected. You're talking about, thank you for uh, correcting the human name. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's the tradition of the kisses, the women name their children. And it's a very smart idea because there were times people had three, four, five wives, so they make sure, so they, make sure they keep track on their children. So uh, I am Yuma, I'm the fifth son of my mother. Thank you. Uh, then we talk about what you, you went through. That's what a lot of librarians went through. We don't understand. But in Liberia, today you buy land, you go back, 
Somebody else has taken them. And that's why we're talking about the rule of law. Without the rule of law, you can't invite investors. Justice is denied. And we also are this time going to set up a real diaspora relationship in Liberia. And I know that in my uh, just speak to the nation and also to the legislators, we will have a diaspora organization. And I say that there are a lot of you here with talent, with potential to contribute back home. There are a lot of people here who have been retired. And I call them retired, but not tired. <laughs> you still can go back home and contribute. And so we want that relationship to be a relationship built to give back, to interact, to make sure that we can look into problems that have been creating difficulty for most of our people so that we can build a better country. And I can assure you, uh, well, I cannot remove the past and you're talking about. There's a time in Liberia, even if you go to uh, the ATM to collect money, they will ask you for tip. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how much that how much corruption has engulfed our country and I can assure you these are the things that we intend to correct we want to make life we want to attract investors and we tell the investors it's not going to be business as usual. We have to move our country to benefit our country, to bring respectability to our people. And we are committed to doing that. And you are here by it. Thank you very much. Now I'm stuck where we have issues with electricity 
and has issues with the internet infrastructure. What strategy this government has to alleviate or help us, you know, achieve the investment that we all hope for in our area? Thank you. Thank you. Ah, give the mic to Clear? Yeah. Next up. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President, the excellence in it. You know, those are all right. My name is Simon Cole. I live in Bedford, Texas. I remember years back we came here as a DD, uh, New Life Fellowship Church. And you say corruption. When it comes to the war crime code, we as we have known that our crisis originated from the West, to the Union, and the world court call that you wish to be here, I appreciate Why can we in the world remember where the remaining judge each of those that were direct those direct involved individual in the crisis. I appreciate it. Is that in, um, if you guys don't mind, we're going to switch over to the former vice president real quick. He asked a question. So we're going to go to him to ask this question. Oh, we have in this meeting one of Liberia's former vice president under the presidency of His Excellency William R. Talbert. My name is Stephen Keller. I'm the former vice president of the Liberian community here in Dallas. I have uh, one question, uh, two questions. One is from my son. His name is Stephen Keller. Also, he's asking if you will build or help the country to have public library in all counties in Liberia. That's for my son, Stephen Keller, to help us to unpack money. So the question here is, what is the Liberian government going to do to assist Liberians who want to start business, who have business proposals that they can show will generate money for the country, but they don't have the seed funding to get started? What is uh, the government looking to do to help them? And uh, end with this quickly, for example, I think we <laughs> wanted to ask all of the questions. The okay. others do want to ask the question of the work The question and answer between us here in Dallas, Texas, where there's a town hall with the Liberian President, His Excellency Joseph. President Boyka, welcome to the United States of America and the great state for recognizing the United States of America in all that it does for what we benefit from each and every day. Thank you very much. I have been a public servant for over 30 years. So for all the men and women that are traveling with you, I want to recognize you as we celebrate public servant recognition week in the Department of the State of Texas to attend the African Economic Summit. I thank you for the brief overview that you gave us, and I thank you for telling us that you have to uh, be able to come across and be ready for the things that are ahead after you complete this summit. The United Nations said that one of the things that's been missing, my pastor said, is a fresh start for Liberia, I believe so. But I did not hear you speak about preparedness or any other goals that goes with resilience. I traveled up to one of the great universities of Liberia, Huntington University, and I asked that question. How are we addressing emergency management preparedness for the communities, the counties, the highways, and the byways of Liberia? How are we going to make that resilience? Thank you, man. I'm going to take five questions. Uh, uh, it's 8.15 it's now. I think we're going to end this round with the president's uh, answer. In the hospital, for example, at JFK, they have a medicine store right across called Lucky Pharmacy. That's where all the doctors send the patient to buy 
medicine immediately we have to suffer yeah. they go to Lockheed pharmacy most of the medicine medicine in the hospital taken away in fact there was a time I used to say the only medicine they have at GFK is ASA <laughs> and I call it after stealing all <laughs> I don't want to be as bad there. was our vice president at some time, but he was also the president of my alma mater, CWA, and he had done a lot of things in Liberia, and actually, I've been with him for some of the things I've done. It's nice seeing you, Bishop. I will come down later. we we'll shake hands. Uh, and Liberia is going to go digital. Uh, we talk about uh, the economy of Liberia, the war crime. Uh, let me let you know that I have a responsibility to protect all Liberians, those that have suffered. They made our people leave the country, live in the diaspora. Up to today, we still have a situation in Ghana trying to bring because people were forced to leave home from invasion. It was Liberians who were killing Liberians. It was not a country that invaded Liberia. You make a decision. You think what you're doing is right. And so, in life, you are 42 out of 73. The Senate, by 28 out of 30. All I am doing is to say yes. From your resolution, we are, and the citizens overwhelmingly want it. It's got to be. We intend to have library in all parts of Liberia. We, we want our children to learn. And that's why we said Liberia must be rich all over. Immediately after my inauguration, and I declare my assets. So we are trying to lead by example. That's what we've been lacking. We make the law for other people, but we must respect those laws in a way that the Bible says you do unto others as you have them to unto you. So that's the Liberia we've been yearning for. And that's the Liberia we intend to have. You are quite right about disaster. I myself, we have all these institutions, we name them. If you say that right, disaster must be prepared for. You have to make sure not just preparing. But many times I used to act, people must even be alert for disaster. But I tell you, these are the things that we intend to correct. And these are Thank you so much, Mr. President, for your commitment to progress. We're going to close up this segment with two uh, final remarks. One from Sister Hawass' daughter is going to ask a question, one final question, followed by Bishop Waters' uh, closing remarks. Hello, my name is Lavina. Activities here in Dallas. Yeah, so let's see if you answer the question now after Bishop Bond. Let me, you, you, let me answer. Let me answer. question. Uh, former Vice President. Uh, uh, Bishop Bond, yeah. Bishop okay. Bernie B. Warner is about to give some reflection. Hello. 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 
that are, that are digging the graves because the people are buried with medals. They're buried with medals. And they're digging for those medals. I call them grave diggers. I call them grave diggers. Uh, because don't go down, go in there to go uh, look for gold medals. Uh, so I am, I am uh, appealing to you to, to, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I bear, I bear, somebody there in Liberia with, 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 with gold men, gold men, you know, and, uh,
the act of putting the new reform programs to bring those to come back. And we've signed those programs. Young lady, that's what we are here for, and that's what we promise to do. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Your Excellency, members of the presidential team, the clergy here at the DF Cardinal, members of our community, elderly, beyond, and not too long, <laughs> President. We welcome you here at the DF Cabinet. As the program stated, my name is Wuleki Kumara, and I am the CEO for the Liberians here in the Southwest. It's an organization called Conference of Liberian Organization in the Southwest. It is just like we have Nula in the East Coast. And first of all, I would like to acknowledge my brother and friend, Anthony B. Kessel, who he and I worked so hard to start up the human citizenship movement that brought us today. <laughs> that brought us today, two years ago, when the, the lawmakers of Liberia signed this deal to make us the new tribe of Liberia. From the US State Department, we are now called Liberian. <laughs> so, many of my colleagues are asking so, what has the Liberian government now say about our passports? Mm -hmm. So, I would like for the President to John and us. Then of course the next thing I want to also say before I get my, I get my thanks for you. I've been asked to ask about open consulates right here in the DMW or not there. <laughs> so, Your Excellency, think of this as we say thanks to everyone. So once again, on behalf of the concept of Colossus, which comprise of Dallas, Houston, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Austin, San Antonio, Arkansas, Denver. These are the folks that make up Colossus. We will thank you from the bottom of our heart and the administration that put together this event, our most humble president, not gone. <laughs> Our young and dynamic board chairman, Mr. President, this is a progressive young man <laughs> who supports all what he does. So, my people, please pass. If you cook food, if you pray for the delegation to come safely, please rise. <laughs> if you are a friend of Liberia, supporter of Liberia, well wishers, please stand. <laughs> and so my friends, let's give our delegation one more time. Let's please. As she relaxed in your office in Monrovia, Colossus wants to give you a little projector so you can relax and uh, just watch movies. Okay, 
we at this time would like to have a brief consultation. Okay, this time I'm going to call on the leadership of LCA, the officers, will you kindly come up, stand for us to take a photo of the president. We'll take the pictures. Okay. Now the program continues here with uh, the president. Uh, the program has ended. However, the most photo opportunity that's happening now, which is excellency, um, and the rest of the community. So now this says leadership. The members of the board are now to the photograph. The board members. Members of the board can join the officer now.